What's up, everybody? Welcome to the live composing show. This is Stephen Malin, video game music composer. I am so stoked for you to join me here today. Man, I am really excited. The weather is beautiful outside over here in Atlanta, Georgia. Just gorgeous weather. We've had some nasty, nasty, rainy days lately, so this is such a blessing. I have a giant window over here. Um, just really nice looking out there. However, I do have extreme allergies to pollen. So that's kind of the, I guess the trade-off there is not the greatest. So I've been sneezing like crazy. So if you hear me sneezing, I apologize in advance. But otherwise, things are really good. This has been a really fun week, a very exciting week. I can't wait to share some really cool game music news with you. But I can't because there's an NDA and I can't share stuff. But I promise I'll share as soon as I can. You're going to be really pumped. I'm pumped. I'm more pumped than I've been in a very long time. Um, so part of the conversation here today is if you are going to be a game music composer and you're not actively writing game music, what are you doing? What are you doing with your time? Right? And this was a recent conviction of mine. I do have one active project right now, potentially a second one on the line. And I keep finding myself in these little pockets and today is no exception. So for example, I show up to work, you know, I have little admin things to do. I have an education side to my business. I have simple samples, audio, right? More, they're more product based. They're more, um, well, there's a lot of emails, there's a lot of admin work, a lot of product management and all those businessy type things, right? But once those things are all taken care of, I usually have this like two or three hour time slot. And on a day like, well, yesterday, I sat down and I was just, hmm, what am I supposed to do with my time? Because I don't actively have a project right this second. Meaning, yes, I'm in communications with clients, but if you, any of you have done a game soundtrack before, there's a, there's a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of waiting time, which is why professional game composers typically have multiple projects at once. That way, they're kind of always working. But there are these little pockets, right? So I have just recently been convicted that, oh my goodness, what am I doing with my life? I want to make sure that I'm always moving forward. And so the thought came to me recently, oh my goodness, I need to make another game music pack. That's something I did. I've made six of those so far. They've done pretty well. Two in particular have done exceedingly well. That tends to be the thing with products in general. 
Sometimes you just have to keep making them until you find the one that really lands and really sticks with people. And once you do some market research, you can really learn what is a good fit for your audience. And in this particular case, you watching, you are probably a game composer or a game developer, or maybe you're just interested in, in diving into this world. Well, let's have a quick chat about what game developers actually want and why music packs even exist. Because as a developer, indie developers usually don't have large budgets. They might have a hundred bucks. They might have 20 bucks, you know? Um, they're not gonna spend thousands to hire a custom composer. Although, if you want that, I'm here, right? Um, but it's that's just not the most common, right? New developers really just want to learn, they want to grow, and they need music. But they don't want crappy music, they want quality music. But they don't wanna go out and spend all this money. So this is where the game music packs really come into play. These developers go to Unity Asset Store or the Unreal Marketplace or to its.io or to Game Dev Market, any of these four stores. They search, they find a music pack that really fits the genre of their game. It's high quality. They only pay 20 bucks, 40 bucks, whatever it is. And now they have 10, 12, 15, whatever tracks to use in their game. And there's not a whole lot of other games using the exact same music. So it's just a win win for obviously the composer making some side income and for the game developer because they're not having to pay a bunch for it. It is non-exclusive, so it's not custom for their game, but they know that and that's fine. So there's definitely a market there. There's definitely a need there. So as composers, you guys know that I've talked about this before. I, I had a, several ranting videos um, last year where I just pff, I poured up my budget, I pulled up my income statements and I showed you guys the hundreds of sales that, that have come from that and, and what happens when you get hundreds of sales on a $10 product or a $20, $30 product, it starts to add up and it turns into hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, right? This is a great side income. So uh, the angle we have to take when writing this stuff is yes, we wanna have fun writing music. It's a great way to turn what we've already made, right? These demo projects or these scrap you know, pieces of music, we can turn them into packs. But what I wanna do moving forward is I want to intentionally make a, a music pack that is designed for a game developer. It loops, it has a certain length to it, there's a certain structure to it, there's a certain genre to it. Nice, clean, packaged, really great product, right? So that's where I'm going with this. And my goal is to just make one for this year because the nature of this stuff is I would rather spend more time making it really, really polished and quality, 10, 12 tracks, something in that neighborhood versus Let's go pump out six more game packs that are kind of mediocre. Not going to fly. And unfortunately, if you go to these shops, you'll notice that the music is really, really mediocre. And it's most of the time, like 95% of the music on there is garbage. And the developers know that. And so they are hunting and they're looking for the good stuff, the cream of the crop. So you really got to stand out. Not just the music, but the branding and the artwork and the organization and it's not about quantity it's never about quantity most game music packs the the top two in most marketplaces have about 100 or 200 tracks in them and i can see the appeal of that but i would much rather have 10 or 12 tracks that are every single one is stellar and every single one is actually usable that is going to really affect a game developer and as a bonus you can get them into your little funnel, your little sales funnel. You can communicate with them beyond the sale and you can actually build up a relationship that turns into a custom project on their next project. Or perhaps they just love you so much and they're like, oh my gosh, this music changed my life and my game made it so much better. Maybe they'll hire you for that game. So it's a great viable side income business. Probably not gonna make a living just off of that, but on these days like me right now, being totally transparent, I do not have an active project right this second, so I'm going to make my own. And so today, I really want to focus on fantasy orchestral tactics, three subgenres. And I would encourage you to do the same. Pick three subgenres. Orchestral is very, very um, inundated, right? It's it's a there's hundreds of packs in the orchestral, so narrow it down. Okay, so I'm going to pick a subgenre, fantasy. Awesome. There's a lot of fantasy. Let's go one, one layer deep. And maybe this will turn into an RPG. Maybe it'll turn into tactics. But recently, I've been very inspired. Um, I picked up a Switch this week. Finally, like six years later, however long it's been since Switch has been out. 
Um, I finally have a game on there, Monster Sanctuary. So that's the first thing I downloaded on there. But another game I just started playing was Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Um, prim- uh, primarily music, <clears throat> if not all of the music, by Grant Kirkhope, good friend. And love, love, love him and I love his music. And I'm just, I love Mario. I don't love Rabbids, but it somehow works. It's a great game and I'm having a lot of fun because it's tactics, it's strategy. And that really got the wheels turning. Man, I could write this. Like, I would love to write this. So long story short, I have a good friend, co-composer friend. Um, I've worked with a bunch. Peter Jones of Monster Sanctuary fame. We've worked together on that. Check out the interview from last week, live composing show if you did not, from Bone Robot Games podcast. That was cool. Talking our talking shop with him. Um, but yeah, he he. we've been recently talking this week about... Should we use templates? Should we use Vienna Ensemble Pro? And I have this template that I built two or three years ago and haven't really used since because I did a film project when I first built it and it was amazing having it because then I could just put all the cues in one session and then leave it there. It's the only DAW that you can do multiple tracks within one session. So it's, it is like tailor-made for soundtracks. So I'm going to be using that today. And another long story short, um, actually spent 20 or 30 minutes loading my template today. It's so big. It is so big. And it uses up like 80% of my computer's resources, which is why I don't typically start with that. A brand new soundtrack, I typically start with a blank Cubase session and just build it out and then use that for the soundtrack. But for today, I thought it'd be super fun because I've already spent weeks, a couple years ago, I spent weeks building this thing. And it still works, and it's lovely and marvelous. Um, I have videos on YouTube if you want to check out how I built this thing. So I won't bore you to death with those details. But with that in mind, I want to say hey to some people. What's up, Ernesto, Cameron, Amaya Music, Achilles, Lorian, Spiral. Spiral says, new DAW? Well, if you've been following me on YouTube, I've been on YouTube for like 15 years. It's crazy, guys. Um... I changed what I've done on YouTube, but now that I'm doing composition instead of piano stuff, um, I can imagine why you'd look at this and say, what? New DAW? It's not new. It's, I just haven't used it in a while. But yeah, DP is freaking amazing if you're going to use chunks. So yes, um, who said that? Who said that? David Medina. Yeah, he said, are you using DP because of the chunks feature? You bet your bottom I am. Bet your bottom dollar. So over here in the right side of the screen, the chunks menu, I mean, you can put this wherever you want on the screen, but the chunks menu is basically every chunk you make is a separate track. It's a separate session within the global session. So I have everything routed. I do want to show this off because this is the reason I use DP for this kind of thing. Check it out. So I have, I don't know, 400 tracks here already made all color coded, all mixed, everything routed beautifully, everything I could ever, ever want. The reason I use DP is because this beautiful search bar up here, check this out. This is just mind blowing. I don't, I don't know how to do this in any other DIW, but I go to the little search menu. Let's type SH for short. Boom. Now I can start playing. Or maybe bassoons. Right? I mean, ugh. SH just meant short, right? Everything I've labeled as short. And I mean, this is just scratching the surface, but I could go over here, I could type in flute, and now every single flute that I have pulls up. I can just go to town. And I have ethnic, I have percussion, jazz, pop, rock, synths, audio, woodwinds, brass, strings, choir, keys. I mean, it, this is like so unnecessary, but that's why I built it. And that's why if I do the whole soundtrack, like in this case, a game music pack, everything's going to sound similar and unified because it's all in one session. So I'm very excited about it. Um, David asks, how much RAM am I using in my template? You don't want to know. Probably about 55, 56 gigs of RAM. 
because I have, oh my gosh, I have 300, 400 heavy VSTs loaded at once. However, to mitigate that, that's really how much is being used. To mitigate that, I have a 64 gigs of RAM, by the way. Totally unnecessary. But to do this, you have to have this insane amount to do a crazy massive template. Again, totally unnecessary, but it's fun. With that in mind, um, I've gone through any of the heavier patches. For example, like this one right here, Espressivo, which is a massive, big old plugin contact. So what I have to do, let me pop over to the Vienna Ensemble Pro screen, which is where I have everything routed over this way. So if I go to that very one plugin, which is hiding within all my folders here under my section multi. Okay, cool. So it's just this one little dude. You'll notice all these little red marks mean that I have purged all the samples. So what that means is as soon as I start playing on the MIDI keyboard, every single note will start loading in one at a time instead of all at once. So this is how my machine even functions right now. But you can see down here, check this out. It's like 80%, 90%. It's, I don't want to say it's struggling because it's not, but it, it, it's getting close, right? I can't do terribly much more in here, but that's why I air quote limited myself to only 300 instruments, right? Of course, if I wanted to disable any of them, it would save RAM, but yeah, it's just crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So that's why and how I'm able to do this insanity. Um, and if you guys want a good PC build that does not break the bank, check out my video. It is two years old, maybe three years old now. I did a, uh, a PC build, it's on YouTube. Just type in my name, Steve Malin PC build, you'll find it. And yeah, it, what's crazy is it, it maybe cost 2000 bucks, 2500 back then. And you know, in technology years, Oh my gosh, three years is forever. And it probably costs half that now for the same power. Or you could use 2,500 bucks again and probably get something twice as powerful. Just how technology works. It's always incremental. So with all that said, all my talking out of the way, I um, appreciate you guys being here. Let's have some fun. I'm like jacked up on caffeine. I'm so ready. I'm pumped to write. I haven't written music in a few days. And so I'm like oozing this desire to write. So let's do it. Let's have some fun. So over here, I don't really have any particular angle today other than like my mind is is 100% in Mario Rabbids mode or Final Fantasy Tactics mode. I want to write music that would work in a battle or an overworld type setting. It's going to probably be a one to two minute loop. And I just really want to write for orchestra today. I've done so much in the chiptune space recently and 16-bit music. I've done a lot of electronic music in the last couple years. And so I'm just like itching to get back to my roots, which is orchestral music. That's like my bread and butter. That's what I grew up on. I literally play violin and cello and viola. Like that's my world is in orchestra. And so I'm really excited just to like go back. Let's have some fun. So right before the stream started, I set a BPM for this one session, which we can call whatever later, 76, which you can see my tempo way up here, super small, 76. And I just wrote this little clarinet line and I think it's fun and worth exploring. So here we go. Cool. And if you hear any popping, Sorry, um, that's just the nature of me running my machine at 90% and streaming on YouTube and running my camera and all the things. So I hope it doesn't pop, shouldn't, just kind of forewarning. Um, and any popping you might hear might actually be the, um, might be an instrument going from purge mode to all of the samples mode, which sometimes takes one playthrough before it cleans itself up especially if like the sample is cutting off. It's just because context like, or play engine, whatever, is like desperately trying to catch up. And then on the replay, it usually is fine. Uh, but anyway, and please guys, if you have more like questions or thoughts you want to explore while we do this, I am all ears. I love talking with you guys. Um, and yes, <laughs> Spiral says, I thought the popping was the metronome. Yes, there is a metronome going to.
Yeah, so I, I just love that little phrase. I think that's gonna be fun. So let's just start doubling stuff. I totally hear just woodwinds, light, happy. Um, let's type in SH for short, and now all of my short articulations across the board from every instrument group is gonna load, so maybe flutes. I don't usually write in majors. This is like very weird for me, but I'm really liking it. I want to add So just right here, let's add. Oh, I want to make sure you guys can see this stuff. Let's flip these, shall we? Hey, now you can see stuff. Man, I've not used DP in so long. It's gonna be fun. There are many composers who swear by it as like the ultimate DAW. DW or DP is very scary with how big it can be. Like it's so intense. Um, it is the most unique doll. I'll give it that. Like it has all of its own weird functions, but if you learn them, it's good. Cool. Excellent. Um, let's play in those flutes. And if I ever want to change something in the mixer, I'm not going to change it within VEP. I'm actually going to flip my screen over here to the uh, mixer within um, Digital Performer. So I'm going to find that one patch, which is way over here. You can tell because the the red button, the recording button, and you will notice that the MIDI is maxed out at 127. So here's an example where I do have to go into VEP, which is not too hard because everything's super organized. Um, but what I want is flutes right here. I know it looks like just a monster. But I just want to go over here. Let's bump that. Love it. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Cool. Here we go. simple little line. Now this clarinet is like stupid loud. So what I would do is go over here, find it. It's not as intuitive of, as using Cubase, but it's not terrible either, but it's just MIDI, right? I can turn MIDI volume down and that's how you do it. Quantize, I just select everything. Uh, what's my command? I think it's, yeah, Command Q. They're all 16ths. Ready, set, hut. Pretty simple, right? Very simple melody, which is cool. I feel like um, string pits needs to happen. I love that everything's just there. If I have the idea in my head, it literally can just materialize and it's wonderful. I already have all the reverb routed, the mixing settings routed, so ah, just makes my heart very happy. And I think I just whacked a, oh cool, I forgot about that. You can do repeating, you, can you see that guys? There's like a little repeat sign that just appeared. Uh, when I hit F2 and F3 on the keyboard, I can actually choose where the, um, re the looping point happens. I mean, every DAW has that. I think it's cute that they use a little um, repeat sign, like in music notation, it's kinda cool. Um, anyway, let's find it.
I like that. That'll be fun to play with. Yes, this is DP. Very classical. I'm kind of feeling some Fire Emblem vibes. Something like that. It's like regal and... and castle like and fantasy that's kind of where I'm, I'm headed let's keep playing this is fun vein um so i really want to very sore on that to modulate a little bit, kind of give it a villagey feel. Um. That is from Adagietto 8 Dio. All right, so have a good A section. I want to play for a second to find a good B. I want it to be start in minor or a uh, four chord. So
cops are annoying, huh? I have so many ideas. Can't do them all though. Um, so let's just run with one. cleanest of all the ideas I've done. Let's take that, quantize, those are all eighth notes. some horns. I like that better. Let me pull out a keyboard so I can clearly hear. So I like having a pianos on here too. Mixolydian mode or Phrygian because of the sharp four. I want that to, it's very orchestral sounding. So, one of the ways I can do this is I can mark, I have to remember how to do this. I think it's just shift M. I hope I'm right. Let me find the marker thingy. Okay, markers, markers, marker. Here they are. New marker. Cool. So, um, let's just, let's just be simple, guys. We'll call this... The A section, call this the B section. That is one thing that um, Cubase has going for it is that you can do infinite, I think you do like 15 marker tracks, so it's just crazy. So I wanna make sure that the B section, let's actually find where it is before I get too carried away here. Um, I wanna repeat the A twice, which is what, only a four bar phrase. Yeah, easy peasy, so six, seven, eight, nine, so bar 10, should start, hope you can follow what I'm doing here. Bar 10 is gonna start the B section. So let's go ahead and pump out some basic chords there. And I'll do it on the piano, that way I have some kind of guide to follow. Thank you. 
the first one. Yeah, David says, uh, DP should have markers like Cubase. Totally agree with that. I'm going to redo that little piano thingy because I want to make sure that the first repetition and the second repetition have different chord endings. It's a really good composition technique. Don't do the same thing twice. So here we go. <laughs> right but you know it's supposed to be heroic and all that jazz so let's get let's lock that part in that's very horns centric and i have the same patch copied twice but routed differently that way uh cubase has this as well i'm sure most daws have this but it's a take feature where you can use the same midi but if you set like horns one and three are considered take one, horns two and four are take two. That way it'll use the same resources and share the resources. Really cool. You can do up to 16 times, or I guess 32, whatever your needs are. But it's a good way to not have to copy that resource twice, which is really, really nice. Same settings across the board. Cool. So let's feel this out. I'm going to use my pedal because this is uh, Cinebrass. Let me just do the melody. Here we go. <laughs> I need to do my own. Uh, Play. Here we go. A lot of coordination. So many things I could do with this. Um, let's keep riding the wave here. This is fun. So that needs so much love. Not sure what else to say. Let's do um, strings short. And you got to be careful that if you type in the search bar, it's going to hide all the regions that you're not actively using. So like my little horns line disappeared for a second. No, 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 no. My tempo is a little fast. Let's do like 72. If my computer explodes, I blame you guys. I've never tried this setup like this. Don't explode, please. <laughs> um. Here we go. 
chant. It's like dying on me. Gross. Not sure what else I could do except to like disable lots of things. That's a kind of feast of purpose. Sorry, people. Sometimes I'd be better off just writing on a piano. Just saying. soon. Mama. are going to be the death of me. I think that is the solution. Let me pop into VEP for a second because everything's loaded. It's just insane. I'm not going to use choir. Like, let me go to the sections I'm clearly not going to use. Um, there actually is a disable button, which is really, really cool. I'll show you it. So that's it. Like you literally just right click that whole section. It'll disable it for you. This is really good. I'm probably also not going to use anything jazz related. So let me disable that. Just to free up some RAM here. <laughs> We've already dropped 10%. That's crazy. There's another 5% right there. Pop and rock. No chance of using that. So there is some, you know... If you experience this, I would encourage you to do the same thing. Okay, cool. We're down to like 65% now. We're getting there. Looks like I've already disabled some of the things. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, let's see if that, that alone saved it. That, that just gave me 20% RAM back. I don't hear any pops. Cool. Maybe that was it. Maybe that's the secret. Dancing around the F shop. Seems so simple, but it works. <laughs> Everything blows up. What else can I disable? I mean, I'm not using half of this. That shouldn't be a challenge. For now, let me just kill all the ethnic stuff. 
since we're really trying to lean into the orchestral stuff. Uh, David asks, what VST would I recommend for pop style brass? Um, I haven't used a lot out there because that's not a style I usually do. Um, so I won't, I really have no recommendation there, but I use just the Contacts Factory Library. It's actually surprisingly good for that. Actually, good saxophones. Better than you'd think. They're not terrible. And then if you ever see this little spinny wheel, it's my autosave. And because it's t having to save the DP session and the entire VEP session, the VN, VN Ensemble Pro, it's longer than a normal autosave. So it does. it's like every 20 minutes and it takes something like 15 seconds. Sorry, not sorry. That's just kind of that's what happens when you use tech like this. Um, but man, you guys are asking questions and I'm not answering. So I apologize. Um Tristan says a while ago, I think a boss theme needs to have a good amount of character and makes you think about the villain while a battle theme is more just movement. Okay. I can relate to that. Uh, yeah. This has been fun so far. Grant Holzauer says, I just used session horns for that, David. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people use session horns. What company is that? Is that uh, Audio Bro? Or Sinus... Sam, Sinasam, something like that. My combining company names. I don't know. Okay, for real now, this is the part where the autosave is taking its sweet time. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. It was just waiting on me. Let me. Here it is. Let's quantize. I'm not used to seeing MIDI regions this tiny, but. You know, every DAW has its pros and cons. Nothing's perfect. It's just kind of what you get used to. That sounds like dookie. That he's got off. I like that. Okay, cool. Session horns. I, yeah, that makes sense. Native instruments. Same thing as uh, session strings. Okay, we kind of have an, a basic outline here. Let's keep rolling with it. This is fun. I clearly have like too many ideas here. Um, this B could almost just be a C section. Um, 
That probably needs to be way back here. The only trouble if you have too many ideas is you don't give each idea enough time to breathe. So this really needs, totally needs a re repetition. So let's do eight plus that. So right here, this is where the B section actually can be. We'll do some instrumentation here. Where we change some things around. So this little guy is no business. This is the B section. So I guess it still is here. Just kind of shuffling some stuff around. Already stuck in my head. Like it's all up here. I just need it to exist. Please, please exist faster. I've always been a melodic composer. Like I can write melodies all day, every day. But like getting it on paper is the tough part. Like getting this stuff into existence out of my head fast enough. Should be quarter notes. Just massaging it ever so much. All these little hand icons are really funny. Cool. I really like those uh, clear wood ones. Do some actual string writing now, because that's that was all just cello and bass, which is fine. Let's get some violas. My favorite instrument group. Playing, shall we? Half of this is just experimenting, right? Okay, that viola is not gonna stay. <laughs> Someone mentioned earlier uh, playing on the off beats. I think that's a good, good call. Good call.
favorite. Oh, that's so good. I like that. Just short horns. The background, very mellow, very chill. I turned down a lot. Probably be good on the A prime section right here. Gotta figure out how to add a marker. How do I add a marker? How do I do it without clicking over here? I don't know, but we're just gonna click over there. AKA A prime, cool. Let's add some horns. Ah! Yeek! I have to have it record enabled. Aye, aye. I like that. Yeah, it's like always moving that the lowest note of the chord. Nah, no. Uh, Yeah, let's keep it simple. Nothing crazy. Man, orchestration's fun. Just experimenting with tone colors. So those are all 16ths. Chun, 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 Just chugging away. See how that captures. And by that point, we, we can uh, double the melody anyway with strings so it's not so lost. Like way up here, I want to do... I was actually humming this tune earlier today and I was like, I should write that. Has someone written that before? Cause it stuck on my head. There it is. And I love how everything's already pre-panned and everything. So it sounds so good in the stereo field. Let's leave it. I'm not even going to quantize it. Let's do second violins. Turn them a hella down. Let's see, they're super loud. Here we go. Now I can quantize both. They need it. Yeah, I like where this is going. Headed. 
Uh, Grant asks a great question. Any reason that I'm not duplicating the MIDI data and then transposing or whatever um, to save time? No way. I love to play every little part, and that's very important to me as an orchestral musician. Even the way that I play the notes, there's going to be different velocities. It's just, it has to be some sense of humanity in this. There it is. I was looking for the pizzicato strings, a little bit loud. And you can already feel how it's starting to feel very human. Let's get some uh, percussion boards in here. I feel like marimba is going to be a really good choice for this. If I could spell, of course, marimba. to do the inverse of the chord inversion of the horns. Basically, I'm following the horns. So they're going like this. Actually, I like it better in that section. So... I like that. So the walking down by half steps here. Um, What's the chord? That's it, so. I 
don't even really want to quantize that if I don't have to. I'll quantize the um, eighth notes because they're off. Oops, I meant 16th notes, didn't I? I like triangle better than chimes. A bit more gentle. Like that. I think we're off to a, a great start here. I like it for the second half, that's cool. Turn it down, it'll be a little bit more effective. Gosh, I miss writing for timpani. Such a cool instrument. Had so much power. Like that. Take it to done. Match the, the double bass. Let's also make sure that the strings end with the timpani. I don't want that extra boom, boom, boom thing at the end. Da, 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 dum. Took a while <laughs> going down. Mm -hmm. 
the heck? Ah, uh, these are supposed to be sixteenths. Oh, butchered that. Just try again. So all these just need to move over. Just a sluggish sample, it's fine. Cool, you guys like it so far? It's been fun. Um, where are you? Let me find my trombones hiding in VEP. Look at all this crazy stuff. Just crazy, guys. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. I was trying to find uh, this one. Okay. I gotta refine the sample. That's okay. I do not use a tempo like this on Cubase. I could build one, I just haven't.
<laughs> it's actually a cool place for the tuba. I'm kind of going for a very colorful vibe, as you can probably feel. I think we're getting there. says kids game like a xylophone. Thanks, Jacob, for saying that. Playful and colorful. That's kind of what I'm going for. Which is not a typical style. I usually go very dark and, and emotional, but this is a really cool, different way to go. I'm liking it. Let's get some uh, brass in here. So 
added that solo there just so I could double it with the legato section. Even that is so loud and obnoxious, probably the wrong choices. Shrill. Let's tame it down. No. Got it now. All right now, it just kind of feels like a wall of sound. I really want to tame it. It's a little much. Let's keep going. 
Rowan. Let's keep massaging it without the click this time. What's up, Peter? Uh, you come to laugh at me? Good. You should. I'm going to hit on a quick note from Daniel. What's up, Daniel Keating? He says, I know you mentioned in a recent video game packs, I guess in a recent video, that game packs aren't as lucrative. Do you still think it's worth investing the time? Just want to hear your current thoughts. Um, I think it's always more lucrative to have custom music gigs, but if you don't have them at the moment and you want to keep being a composer, then you should probably write some music. It's kind of where I'm at. That's fine. I don't have work every single day doing this, so you got to make your own work sometimes. Have some products out there making money for you. so cool to hear that reaper has a search box that's such a big deal and other daws do not have it it's like a huge deal with building a huge template like this finding all your things is really important Strings are super loud. Turn down a little bit. Where are we? Violin one, legato. All right, go. Folks, I'm going to take a quick coffee break. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Enjoy the break. Back in a couple minutes. See ya. We'll keep going.
Hey, welcome back to the Live Composing Show. Lots of fun comments going on in the live chat. Peter is talking about all kinds of stuff, about templates. Yeah, he definitely inspired me to try this again. As we've already seen in the last hour and a half, templates are awesome, but the only problem with a massive template is it destroys all your RAM and CPU if you leave everything on. So as we discovered, had a lot of pops and nasties how to go in and like disable instrument groups that I know I'm not going to use for this track, which is okay. It's fine. Um, but yeah, let's get back to the show. Let's keep working on this. Ah, what's the name of the coffee break track? I don't even remember what I put in there. It's one, some track I wrote. I like my A section. I don't like my B section. Uh -oh. I lost all my things. Eek! Eek ads! <laughs> My controller just turned off. Oh, there it is. Found it. Dude, this is totally like a banjo kazooie ukulele. Or if this is like our castle track, I guess. It's like it's snowing at the castle. Lively chat. Love you guys. You're great. Hmm. Okay, let me let me focus on like the feel of the track, not so much what instrument I use. like this it's just not what I wanted to write today <laughs> too much from Zelda 2, but I think we got something. And this is really the joy of why we do this. So this is like a, let's just rename that chunk as, how do I rename stuff? There we go. You have to alt click. Um, let's just call that like regal castle theme, whatever. Then all we have to do is duplicate. Um... Duplicate sequence. Give it a second. 
It's going to literally copy and paste the entire track and then hit the little play button on the one that you want to be working on. Then it takes a second, but since all of this is VEP and doesn't require any switching of anything, it does a quick check and then boom, we now are in a new track just like that. It's like the whole reason we use this program is the chunks feature. Oh, how do I freaking like the easiest thing in the world, renaming a track, like they make complicated. There we go. Um, let's call this like on the battlefield. So I'll go through, I'll just delete all of my little markers. With the exception of an A section, which I like to have right there in bar two. I like my little um, harp thing. We're just gonna run with that. Let's pick a tempo that makes sense. Here we go. G minor, baby. I just like I totally have tactics vibes from that right there. All oh, eighth notes, I think. I hope. Let's feel that out. Dang it! <laughs> They're sixteenth notes. I should have known better. Syncopation. I love that. Yes, now we're, okay, now like, I had to get that other thing out of my way to like lean into what I actually do, which is like dark emotional music. So let's do, um, let's get our legato strings. You ready for this? Mm, feeling it guys. Let's give the same treatment to Chelly. Ah, let me follow that better. I can actually visually watch it. to open it up to watch it sorry there we go Cool, I like that a lot. Okay, 
That a whole measure there. Cool. Let's see what I can do about combining those. Is that even a thing? Bum, 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 bum. So everything needs to be sixteenths. Let's get the first violins up.
<laughs> I love that you can hear damage. Yeah, it's Armageddon. Ensemble. Going into hybrid territory, but why not? Some ideas out. Just at the end. La, 
Of course, we'll do some orchestral things on top of it. Like even that moment, that would sound really cool with like some uh, short woodwinds. Double some things up. La 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 la. find that in my long list of percussion this is the fun of you know having stuff preloaded you can really just go ham Lots of layers going on now. This is some uh, Spitfire percussion. mid-range toms. Layering is everything with percussion. set the atmosphere.
Cool. This adds a lot of dimension to it. In order to answer the question from uh, Jacob, thanks. I like that breathy flute too. Uh, the synth bass was just a massive patch or a zebra patch, whichever. One of those. Ah, there we go. We go, I get some gong in there. depth too. My level's a little bit off, but don't love starting that hot. Maybe I can just start like this. Yeah. Things like super loud. Giving some brass tabs. I think we're definitely more in that tactics territory than we were before. Because, you know, it's minor, it's big, it's heavy, it's percussive, it's militaristic. No, it's like really go for it.
right idea. So, this needs horns. potential there.
Galecci. Hey, what's up, Casey? I'm getting to the end of my creative streak here, for sure. So I'm going to jot some of these ideas down. Definitely revisit these. hate how much it's clipping it's just there's so much stuff open I'm wondering what I can close down let me try this maybe that'll knock some down Well, folks, that's what we have to work with so far. Let's listen to a little bit of that. Okay, this has been a lot of fun, just getting to play around with these sounds. I have a sneaking suspicion that really the only way to move forward with this so that I'm not constantly trying to disable stuff, I don't think I can move forward with this whole VN Ensemble Pro thing. I thought I would. It's a cool concept, but man, you just have to have so much RAM available and it's just crazy. It's a good way maybe to sketch some things. I don't know. I, I'm not convinced at this moment. I feel like I do better work with Cubase when I start fresh, but now I at least have some basic ideas. If I pull up some strings, some woodwinds, some percussion and brass and stuff, I feel like, you know, if I could just load 15 tracks, I can create a more easy to, to access and utilize template than trying to do it this way. So I don't know. It was worth, it was worth a shot. Uh, and it was definitely fun for just kind of poking around different sounds, but I don't know. Just don't know. But cool. Thanks, guys, for, for jumping in today. This has at least started the process of writing a couple tracks for the Game Music Pack, and I definitely want them to all be in the same uniform style. So I'll keep poking around and bring you guys along for the ride as I jump into the, um, definitely revising these and, and starting some new tracks as part of the Game Music Pack. Uh, so thanks, guys, for being a part. I'm going to end it here for today. If you just jumped in, make sure you rewind back to the first track we were working on, the Regal Castle theme. And it's a much happier um, orchestral track. Um, hope that, that'll be fun for you. We worked on that in the first hour. All right, guys, take care. You guys have a wonderful